Well, just to wrap up, and I, I planned 10 minutes, but it's going to be five, hopefully. Um, the Wilson and Jung criteria and their current, uh, their validity in current day practice. Um, um, are, is there development? Uh, this is a quote of Wilson and Jungner in their monograph, and actually I was really very surprised to see the exact same quote this morning, um, because I thought it was very original. Um, but apparently, Wilson and Jungner themselves said that the criteria should not be considered dogmatic, but um, there should be, should be um, uh, considered the starting point for discussion. So apparently, um, there is a section at the bottom of the principles for comments, and one of the first to, um, to make um, an inventory of all those comments uh, was Anne uh, Ennerman uh, in her um, Hallmark paper published in 2008, where she revised um, all of what was published in 40 years of time. Um, especially against the background of the genomic age. And uh, what she did, she presented an additional 10 criteria um, based on interviews and 50 lists of criteria published in those 40 years. And those are these 10 additional ones, uh, some of which are already outlined in the, in the original principles. Some are indeed inspired by the possibilities of genetic screening. and. Um, if I may draw your attention to just the last one, the overall benefits of screening um, should outweigh the harm. One would have expected, um, one would have expected that, uh, uh, given the careful consideration that Wilson and Jungner paid to the harm, even in the introduction of the monograph, and I heard uh, Pip you said there will be snacks. There are snacks that they would have adopted specifically this principle in the original book, and they didn't, uh, especially since it has now become almost the central dogma of screening. And then Anderton's paper specifically said that, um, apart from criteria, these days you may want to have a, a framework, um, especially because these days, people in governmental institutions, maybe not clinicians, maybe not um, uh, scientists, are, need to be able to put criteria into frameworks and be able to um, improve on, on screening. So given, uh, with these frameworks, at least you integrate various types of scientific and contextual evidence. You make explicit the iterative process you compare various alternatives. You can consider whether implementation is actually working. And you encourage um, documentation of evidence so that in the next cycle, you're able to, um, to appreciate what has changed and maybe come up with a new recommendation. And that's exactly what has been done. Um, these frameworks have, are now active in a number of, of countries, in, in Canada, in the US, in the UK, in Australia, in Denmark, and even the Dutch now have their own framework. And actually, it's speci specifically for this occasion, we made a translation. So if you're interested, um, please contact Eugenie Deckers, who uh, has a number of copies. And um, just to go ahead a little bit quicker than I used to be, what, what I would try, was trying to make, um, the point I was trying to make here is that frameworks uh, still have a skeleton that is really nothing more and nothing less than the Wilson and Jungner criteria. So a 2013 framework is still based on the Wilson and Jungner criteria. And this is just to show you that the UK framework is applied for a number of diseases and already a number of years. And what, is, what, you, what, what needs to be appreciated is that uh, dates for retesting and for re-evaluation are already set. So this is all now a cyclical process. And this is just another example, a paper at, uh, of, uh, uh, published in 2014 on whether skid screening should be mandatory in international newborn routine screening programs. 
where the evalu evaluation is done t uh, um, uh, using the 10 original criteria. Uh, by the way, also acknowledging the element criteria. Um, so back to the principles, why were they so important? We still got bothered with that question, and, we, uh, and Kate Hall asked it directly to, uh, to Max Wilson. <clears throat> and he said, um, he said actually, well, it's quite simple. They were outstanding then. Nobody challenged them. And um, we all quoted him on each occasion. And what is really important is that the, uh, the WHO series, especially in the, in the 60s and 70s, was, was very well um, circulated and considered important. So there you have it. They were good and they were off to a very good start. So back to the quote of Wilson and Junger. Um, it was an inspiration for um, uh, especially these countries in the beginning, Sweden, the USA, and, um, and the UK. That's why the flags are here. And since there are flags over there, there's a rule that whenever there are flags, there should also be a Dutch flag. So that's why the Dutch flag is standing here. And let this be an inspiration to all members of ISNS. And um, these are the people we really, really want to thank. So that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you.